What's up guys, Brett Kelly here. Today I'm bringing you a intro video on how to use the Vassal board game simulator for Imperial Assault. If you are interested in playing Imperial Assault online, Vassal is a great tool to use. A lot of top tier players are always on looking for games and you can get in today and grab a game, game against someone who's very top tier. Uh, so just follow these instructions. First, you have to go to vassalengine.org and download Vassal and install it. And then you go to modules on vassalengine.org and search for the Imperial Assault module. You open up Vassal and you import, you click import and you go to wherever your download page is and you import the Imperial Assault module and just boot it up and you should be ready to go. And just follow the uh, instructions on the video and you should be all set to play your first game on Vassal. Alright, so what we're looking at is the Vassal program. It's a board game simulator and there's it's kind of like if you've played tabletop simulator it's very very similar to that. Um, so what we have here is an emulated version of Imperial Assault. Uh, we are showing you the Moss Isley Back Alleys map right now. And I have two players, player one and player two. Um, you can, so basically what this is, is just a platform for people to customize so they can load in pictures of maps and cards and things. And then there's scripts for rolling dice and drawing cards and stuff like that. And there's different ways to hide cards that you're supposed to hide from your opponent. And you have like a hand and things like that, so... Uh, if you want to play on Vassal, and you already know how to play Imperial Assault, you just log in here. You um, So the first thing you'll see is there's... Let me just make sure. Um, it's out of the way also. Alright, so when you log on, the first thing you'll see here is this lobby, basically. And in the lobby, there's a main room that you'll start in. We'll just go back to that. Uh... And then you can create a game here, and I'll just create a new lobby for you. So what you want to do, when you create a new lobby, it'll automatically put you there. And then you just go up in the uh, top left here to file, and you can just load a mission. And these are the missions that are in the current map rotation, but you can pick really any mission that's already been uh, uploaded to Vassal. So... Um, let's see, you can't really see here. Let me add a new window. So it'll pop up with this dialogue, and you can pick any of these maps. So there's a ton in here already. Old maps, they don't go away. They just don't get set on the current map rotation list. So if we wanted to go back and play something like, uh, I don't know, Anchorhead, we can just load this up. And then we click map, and here we go. Here's our anchor head map. To make it easy, we're just going to load uh, one of the ones in the current rotation. So we'll just load up Moss Isley here. We're going to enter as player one, just so we have some control. All right. And then, uh, okay, so the next thing you want to do is... You want to go up here to Cards, Figures, Tokens. And this has a directory of every card that's in the game. Deployment cards, command cards, mission cards, condition cards, shape cards for Claudites. There's also uh, little tokens for figures. So there's uh, tokens for figures that you could drag onto the map. Um, but what we want to do is make a list, okay? So we're just going to go to deployment cards for now, I guess. We'll just make, let's just make uh, the Spectre Cell list because that's pre-made. We don't have to think about it. So Spectre Cell is Chopper. We drag that to player one. Uh, Zeb, um, Kanan, Ezra. Um, Hera, and we're missing one. Who are we missing? Oh, Sabine. 
All right, so we got this specter cell here. Uh, at the bottom here, you'll see all the um, upgrade cards. Heroic effort is uh, auto include since it's free. And then we'll also take, we got one more point. We're gonna take um, a neutral card called doubt because it's the best neutral card. Better, way better than extra armor. Definitely way better than extra armor. Not really, I'm just kidding. Uh, extra armor is good too. Doubt is also good though. All right, so we have our list here. Uh, we need to fill it up with command cards. Let's just see if we can do that real quick, uh, just to just to fill it up. Uh, we'll do some smuggler cards first. On the lamb, drag that to player one. On the lamb and tools for the job, we'll get pulled in to our command card list. All right, so after you have your command cards, you can hit this button up here. Oh, let me. You can hit this button right here to send all of your deployment cards to this stack. And then you can right click the set stack and click save. And then you can just save this as, I'm just gonna save this as specter cell. And this is just the deployment cards. Okay, so then you can go ahead and draw uh, I don't know, seven cards. I'm pretty sure that's the whole deck. Oh, it must be eight. So you can just draw eight, put them back here, and then you need to highlight all of the command cards and hide them with Control H. And then you can click this button here to send all the command cards. And then you can save the command cards as Specter Cell Command Card Set 1. And so that way, every time you load the game up, you can, let's just draw all these, 15. So we'll just draw 15 and put them there, here. So now every time I play, I can right click here and just go to load. And then I can go to my Spectre Cell command cards. And now I have all of my command cards back. Um, and I can like mess around with them and customize them. You can save the command cards and the deployment cards together, but I like to do it separately uh, just because it's better for if you're customizing a command card deck or something like that and you wanna have a consistent deployment card list or you're pretty happy with your command cards and you wanna mess around with your deployment cards or something like that. So if you really need to just delete something, just draw multiple and draw all of them and then just highlight and delete. Um, all right, so another thing we need to do is make figures for all of these. So you can just highlight the whole list. So I'm just gonna click and drag and highlight and then I'm just gonna press Control F and it will create a figure for each one of them which I can drag around and place on the board. So now this is my list here and I can place them on the board wherever I want. Uh, and that's that's the basics of list building. So. Uh, once we have the map up, we have our list, we can go ahead and put them on our deployment zone. And then, um, once the game starts, you know, they can, you can move them with, by clicking and dragging them. That's how you, I usually do it. Some people also use the arrow keys, uh, which is, works also, um, the main thing is just make sure your opponent knows, uh, you know, how many spaces you're moving and stuff like that because they can only move a certain number according to their speed. And you can go up, you can interact with things, just, um, you can just, for doors, you just move them or delete them. And then for crates, you press control eight to pick up a crate. So now you can see Ezra has this little crate icon here. So that means Ezra's carrying a crate. So there's a couple different options for interacting with things. Uh, you can always right click and click draw multiple cards if you want to draw multiples or you can just drag off the top to draw one. Um, Control H will show you. If you reveal your command cards, they will show to your opponent. But the nice thing is if they're hidden, you can see what they are, but your opponent cannot see what they are. So I can see right here, I have tough luck, officers training, fleet footed and strength in numbers, but my opponent does not have access to that information.
Um, you also have a scoreboard up here. You can press Control N up there to enter your name. And then you can press plus or minus to add victory points from kills, or you hold Control and press plus or minus to add victory points from conditions. You have an initiative marker, which you can drag to whoever has initiative. Um, every figure has a health bar at the bottom. Um, they really, it would be nicer, I think, if they start at their max health and count it down. It'd be a little more intuitive. But they all start at zero. This is more of a damage tracker than a health tracker. So uh, you can just press plus or minus to add damage on each figure. So, for instance, if Zeb takes nine damage, I just press plus nine times and he has nine damage on him so when you're watching the game that's one of the main things you're going to watch out for is how much damage each figure has on them uh, you can also get conditions by press pressing control one two or three for um, negative conditions you can see if i press control one that'll affect the condition in the top left it's bleed stunned and weakened and same for control two and three positive conditions are control four and control five for focused and hidden uh, there's also power tokens for control six you can cycle through between damage surge block or evade and control seven does the same thing you can have up to two power tokens and then again control eight is to pick up a crate or drop a crate um, if you need something like um, a demolish token or something you go back to cards figures tokens and there is a tab for tokens where they have uh, rubble tokens and stuff so you can find that there and that's the basics um, of course there's dice rolling there's a tab up in the top left of the right up here for rolling right here for rolling dice so you just click that there's a couple different ways to do it you can either click where did my dice thing go you can either click um, the dice and click one to roll one or two to roll the second one or three or four you know whatever or you can right click and you click control and roll however many di however many dice you want so if I want to roll three dice at a time, I just hold control and press three, and I'll roll three. Um, you can always re-roll by right-clicking the dice and clicking re-roll or pressing control V. You can only re-roll one time, of course, per die. Uh, and you can also add automatic modifiers over here. So if you have like a, if you're spending a power token, or if you have a built-in block or something like that, that's where you add that. So. You roll offense, you roll defense, you add it up. That's how we calculate damage. Pretty intuitive, and then we can clear dice. Okay, that was the basics. Uh, there are a couple advanced features in Vassal. For instance, if you're using uh, Thrawn, and you want to use his special ability, which lets you look at one of your opponent's cards, there is a way to do that, but we're not going to cover that in this video. I hope you enjoyed this intro to Vassal. I hope you I hope to see you online. I hope to get a game in against you. And thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to uh, follow me, hit the bell, and I hope to see you in the Twitch as well at twitch.com slash Brett P. Kelly. Thanks a lot. Bye.